Once upon a time, game companies would laud this ridiculous notion that the future of gaming would be entirely reliant on live services. That live services was the way of the future, and that this is where gaming is headed as a whole. But they're not seeing that same tune anymore. It has been an onslaught for live services these past couple of weeks. Many of them have gotten cancelled behind the scenes or shut down after their launch. And we heard some of the casualties recently when it was was reported by Bloomberg that EA canceled not only a single player Titanfall slash Apex Legends crossover game that was supposed to be essentially a Titanfall single player campaign with Apex Legends elements, but also we learned that a number of mobile live services got shut down, like Battlefield Mobile here, which this developer found out just kind of at the last minute, out of the blue, out of nowhere, a game he'd been working on for almost three years. And in parallel, we saw Respawn announce that we have made the decision to sunset Apex Legends Mobile. The game will sunset on May 1st, 2023 at 4 p.m. Pacific. A few days prior, on January 19th, 2023, it was confirmed that Ubisoft had canceled an upcoming live service game, a PvP game named Project Q. This comes after the shutdown of their Battle Royale live service, Hyperscape, and also the cancellation of another Battle Royale project, from the Ghost Recon franchise, Ghost Recon Frontline. It was so poorly received, they decided to not go forward with it. And the list just continues a few days prior to that. On January 20th, 2023, it was announced that Marvel's Avengers would be shutting down via this blog post right here, which states, scrolling down here, that official support will cease on September 30th, 2023. Now, this game won't completely shut down. Both single-player and multiplayer gameplay will continue to be available, but it's basically going to be on live support. The live service component is very much much as good as dead. It's just not something that's going to get continuously updated. Much like Anthem, it's still accessible, but the live service component is very much dead, so there's no reason for people to keep revisiting this title. More casualties were observed in the month of February 2023, among them being the Xbox exclusive shooter Crossfire X developed by Smilegate and Remedy, which is not only shutting down in May, but will also become completely inaccessible, and that's for both the multiplayer and the single player component. As Video Games Chronicle reports in their article here stating that both multiplayer and solo campaigns will be inaccessible after May. And there's also something that if you look at the official blog post announcing service closure, you can see down here that they not only announced the decision to end support for the game on May 18th, 2023, but also linked to an FAQ where you can find a section titled, Will I Still Be Able to Play the Crossfire X Campaigns? They specify here that you'll be able to enjoy and complete them until servers close on May 18th, 2023, which is another way of saying that single player will not be accessible after May 18th. While it's not necessarily a game that people will miss, the meta score and user scores here speak for themselves, it doesn't change the fact that this is a game that will be lost in history, it's a game that won't be preserved, and even if it's far from the most beloved game ever, it doesn't change the fact that there are people who bought this game and still expect it to be accessible because because they spent money on a product. But unfortunately with live services, there's the possibility that the money you spent will go towards a product that will just turn into dust. This is why I hate those games, specifically those live services, who even lock the single player mode behind an online connectivity requirement that is completely unnecessary. The single player component, which should be able to stand on its own, gets dragged down alongside the now defunct multiplayer component. Another casualty from February 2023 was none other than Back for Blood, the spiritual successor to Left for Dead. As stated here by Twitter user Lo Ping, Back for Blood is officially being abandoned by the developer less than two years after release. Meanwhile, in a game released 14 years ago, and these two screenshots highlight the concurrent players on Steam for Back for Blood versus Left for Dead. You can see right here, Back for Blood's player base very quickly sunk into the low thousands before it was decided that the game's live service component would no longer be supported. Meanwhile, Left for Dead 2, looking at this game's numbers, it's raking in tens of thousands of players every day. And as the Twitter user said, this is a 14-year-old game we're talking about that's still having long legs. Here's Turtle Rock's official announcement saying that this phase of our war against the Ridden now comes to a close. We don't have quite enough folks to continue Continue working on Back for Blood content while we spin up another game. Now, it is emphasized here that Back for Blood won't be shutting down. The game will still operate and continue to be accessible. But in terms of expanding upon the foundation and giving people reason to keep coming back to it, 
that's an aspect that just will cease to exist. Also reported on February was the shutdown of Konami's online murder mystery game, which was removed from sale just 10 months after launch. That game is titled Crime Side, and in three months as of the publishing of this video, on May of 2023, the game will disappear forever. It'll no longer be accessible. And you can see right here that the small community that did enjoy this game are none too happy to hear about this. It's why the recent reviews have been at mostly negative, a mere 20% versus the overall very positive review score of 80%. It was likely higher before these mostly negative reviews poured in. A lot of the recent negative reviews come from people calling out the fact that Konami is still selling the game, despite the fact that they've announced live service termination for it. While there is an article here that reads, important service termination announcement as a warning, it doesn't change the fact that not everyone might see this and just making this available for purchase when the game is very much dead is pretty egregious, but then again, that's nothing new for Konami. Then comes this announcement a day before February kicked in, the shutdown of Echo VR, which is this VR sports game that I can only best describe as Cyber Quidditch. You can see right here that this is a game that's garnered really good reception. The footage looks like this for those who are curious about it. Again, it very much looks like Cyber Quidditch or throwing this ball or I guess in this case, disc around into rings or hoops or something you're moving around in the air it does look pretty fun does look pretty cool but the decision was made to shutter this game forever and this is one of those games that will not be available after it's shut down echo vr will continue running until august 1st 2023 10 a.m pacific at which point servers and services will shut down preventing any further play a few days prior on january 25th 2023 square enix announced the shutdown of yet another live service of theirs this is dragon quest the adventure of die a hero's bonds i actually hadn't heard of this game until this shutdown announcement was made but you can see right here that they're ending the service on April 26, 2023 at 8 p.m. Pacific. And because of its reliance on online connectivity, there is no way to continue playing this game offline after service termination. Moving back to February, here we have Knockout City, which is essentially a third-person dodgeball shooter or dodgeball brawler, whatever you want to call it. It actually looks pretty fun. I know some people have had a good time with it, but it didn't draw enough interest from players to be viable for the long term, so they made the announcement about the future of Knockout City, how Season 9 will be their final season, and all servers will be shutting down on June 6, 2023. And it is fully specified in their blog post here that after the shutdown happens, the game will no longer be playable, though they are trying to salvage aspects of it by creating a private server version on PC so Knockout City can live on forever. At least this developer is making the attempt to preserve this game on some level, though the same couldn't be said about Rumbleverse, the Battle Royale brawler that is shutting down later this month on February 2023, six months after launch, so a very short-lived lifespan. It is explicitly stated in the blog post down here that any player who has spent money on Rumbleverse is eligible for a refund of money spent on or in the game. So at the very least, they are doing right by customers who expected this game to have much longer legs. Live services for Rumbleverse will go offline on Tuesday, February 28th at 10 a.m. CST. After that, this game will not be playable. So these are what, like 10 live services that I've just pointed out that have all been shuttered or have announced that they'll be shutting down or were canceled behind the scenes within just the last few weeks. This has been a massacre for live services. And if we go further back by a few months, you'll find games like Babylon's Fall have been shut down, another Square Enix published live service, by the way. This is a game whose service will be ending later this month on February 28th, 2023. And once the shutdown happens, much like many other live services, you will no longer be able to play the game. Again, not necessarily a game that will be missed, but a game just being able to completely disappear off of the face of the planet. Just the idea of people's game purchases being able to completely turn to dust and disappear forever, as if you never bought the product. That to me is not something that I'm on board with. I think game preservation is important, even for the crappier titles. If you want to look at the full list of shuttered live services these past few weeks, here's Gematsu who tweeted this bullet list, and I've covered most of these. And then there's this other list by Twitter user Hunter who highlighted many of the games that I have. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been genuinely one of the worst periods ever 
for live services. And I have little doubt that part of the reason why this is happening is because of the economic recession we're headed into and the fact that tech companies and some gaming companies have been negatively impacted. And so game companies are being a lot more reserved about taking financial risks and are focusing more on cutting costs. And part of that involves shuttering live services that are not generating enough revenue for them to be justified, for them to be maintained, which costs a recurrent amount of money for these companies. Many live services have been facing something of a reckoning. Once upon a time, companies would laud that live services were the way of the future for gaming, that single player or campaign driven or non live service games would be forgotten and that everything would be live services. That's their ideal future, not because it's actually good for the medium that is gaming, but because that will allow them to recurrently monetize all of their games, allow them to generate more profit through a more lucrative business venture that ultimately can potentially make games worse. Not to say that there isn't a place for live services in gaming, but when that's all they're focused on, and when they're focused on shoehorning games into a live service model just for the sake of monetization rather than because they have a good idea for something that could be a genuinely good live service game, you get games that feel so substandard because they were sort of shoved into a live service mold that isn't well suited for it. Now, that's not to say that all of these shuttered live services were bad. There were some among them that were actually pretty good but live services ultimately live by the number of players that partake in the live service, the number of participants. Players are the lifeblood of live services with a campaign-driven game or a single-player game or a non-live service game. If a game flops, it will still live on. It'll still exist. But if a live service doesn't draw in enough players, it'll die off and then it'll just completely cease to exist. And that reliance on these live services being inhabited by many players concurrently and the reliance on them returning continuously is becoming untenable as the market of live services becomes more saturated with these live services demanding so much time from players, all of the grind that's involved. There are only so many players out there in the world and they only have so much time in their lives to spend on so many games. So once the live service market becomes oversaturated as it has become, there comes a point where there's just not enough players with enough time out there to be able to populate all of these live services that have oversaturated this market. And that's a problem that single player games don't experience because you're not meant to play single player games at infinitum. You're supposed to be able to finish them after a dozen or two hours, after a couple dozen hours, maybe a couple hundred hours at most. And so even though the single player game market is saturated, there are plenty of players with plenty of time to partake in a variety of these games because you're meant to spend a limited time with each of them. So this massive of live services not only highlights the misguided thought process of believing that the future is all live services, it also highlights the downside to live services failing. These games, some of which might be good, disappear forever. Which is why these days I try not to get too invested in a live service because you never know when all of your efforts, all of the progress you made in one live service, all of the work that you've done to accomplish certain tasks or obtain certain rare items, you never know when all of that will go to waste and will just straight up not exist anymore. Don't get me wrong, if a live service does succeed, it can become incredibly lucrative and pave the road to significant growth for a game studio or a game company, pave the road to future projects. But the risks of live services have to properly be assessed. It can't just be a gold rush for live services, especially now that the market is so saturated. There's gotta be an understanding that if the player base dies off as a live service goes on, then the lifeblood of the game is lost. The game will die. There are maintenance costs to consider that single player games don't have to worry about. And single player games don't rely on players playing that game forever. It just relies on how many copies are sold. Whereas live services not only rely on how many players partake in the game, but also how long they stay engaged with the game. If they start falling out and the player base starts kind of diminishing, then the gameplay of a live service straight up ceases to function because it was built around players interacting with each other and where there are not enough players to interact with in a game, then the live service ceases to function, which is not something you can say about single player games, which are their own isolated worlds and instances. The folly of this gold rush towards live services is becoming abundantly clear these past few weeks as all of these different live services meet an untimely and unceremonious demise. So yeah, I don't know about you, but I think it's time for game companies to start dialing back on this notion that everything has to be a live service because we're starting to see now how that mentality is getting a lot of companies in a lot of trouble and it's losing them a lot of money that could have gone into compelling single-player experiences that may not have made as much money as a Fortnite per se, but 
might have made its money back. This is not me trying to say that there is no place in this industry for live services and that it should be all single player games. What I'm saying is if you treat live services as a shortcut for financially lucrative ventures, if you treat it as a shortcut way to make money, that mentality is going to come back to bite you in the ass because just like single player games, live services succeed by their ability to stand out, by their ability to generate word of mouth buzz that spreads like wildfire because people can't help but talk about a game's merits that's the stuff that's going to decide whether your game is commercially successful or not going live service and putting all of your eggs in live services that's not going to be the automatic win button there are only very few live service ips that generate billions of dollars every year and to compete against that, you really have to come up with something that is inspired not something that is chasing a trend or something that just seeks to exploit the nature of live services. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that I hope that game publishers are looking at what's going on here, the onslaught that's happening for live services, and realize that factory producing live services and tripling down on this genre of games isn't going to automatically yield success, isn't automatically going to make them all the money, or at least that's one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on this slew of live service deaths, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.